Hello, this is English with Jane and today I'm very excited to share with you this book by Benjamin Zephaniah. It's called My Story and a very good friend of mine sent this so I'm really excited to read. The first chapter is from Jamaica to England. My parents came to England in 1954. It was a time when there were a lot of jobs, road sweeping, driving buses and stuff like that. My mum and her sister were walking down the street in Jamaica one day and they saw this poster saying, Come to the mother country where the streets are paved with gold. There are jobs galore. My mum wanted to go. She wanted to do something with her life. She thought that Jamaica was a small island and Britain was a big place with opportunities. Ooh, look at the size of that ship. She didn't want to be stuck in St Elizabeth picking potatoes all her life. So my uncle gave her the money for the fare, which was only about £20, and she got on a ship and came. When she got here, she mentioned to somebody that she'd like to do nursing and they told her to go to Birmingham, so that's what she did. Oh, it's a busy house. I was born in Aston. I don't really remember that so much, but then we moved to Hockley because we got our own council house and I remember that Hockley was very white, very poor, but very white. I remember that our house had no bathroom. We just had an old tin bath in the communal back garden. We had a busy household because I've got seven brothers and sisters. There's me and my twin sister and there's another set of twins too. I'm the oldest and because I'm the oldest, I was the boss for a long while. I remember that when the school over the road from us closed down, I went over and got all these exercise books and brought them into the house during the school holidays. I made all my brothers and sisters go to school with me as the teacher. They didn't want to, but I made them do it because I was the boss. I actually really liked a busy house. A house with lots of kids and lots of noise. Somebody was always crying. Somebody was always cut. Somebody was always hurt. And there was no such thing as privacy. We had a double bed. And there'd be two up and two down. Though we all swapped around. So you were never sharing with the same person. I worked out who I wanted to share with. By seeing whose feet were the least smelly. Ooh. We were really poor and didn't get new things very often. There was only one comb in the house and sometimes it would go missing and Mum would have to comb everybody's hair with a fork. As our shoes wore out, instead of buying a new pair, our dad would make new soles out of cardboard so that they lasted longer. He'd cut out the shape of the shoe in the cardboard and stick it to the bottom of the shoe. It was all right if it was dry, but if it was wet, it was horrible. I remember one day watching my brother walking and as he walked, you could just see a bit of the cardboard. So I got him to watch me. And when he said he could see the cardboard on my shoes too, it completely changed the way I walked. I stopped lifting my foot up behind me because I didn't want the other kids to see the cardboard. School days. I remember my first day at school. Me and my sister were the only black children there and we were in the same class. So I said to her, you've got to be tough. Don't let anybody put you down. But she still got really upset and cried a lot. I was trying to be the tough guy and my sister just cried. She cried all day and you could hear her anywhere they put her in the school. It was quite embarrassing so I decided to distance myself from her a bit so people didn't think we were the same. So she was crying and there I was, her twin brother, trying to disassociate myself from her. 
But I did stand up for my brothers and sisters. When they all joined the school, it was my job to look after them. If there was ever a problem in the playground, I didn't fight. I'd just look out for them and we'd hang out in a big gang. It was a very old-fashioned school, very strict. I'd call it Victorian. Old-fashioned teachers, hair in buns, really bossy. Just after me and my sister arrived, as a kind of celebration, they encouraged all the kids to bring in a gollywog to impress young Benjamin. Wasn't really seen as racist at the time, but I didn't really like it much there. Food, glorious food. One good thing about school was the dinner. We got free school meals and they were treats for us because the food we had at home was very Jamaican so this was our first chance to have English food. Pies, mashed potato and mushy peas. I was a very reluctant meat eater though. I never really liked meat. I preferred vegetables, fruit and things like cake and custard. So sometimes I'd skip the dinner part and just have pudding 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 run 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 i was very sporty at school i loved football and running sprinting put a jumper down there put a jumper down there and i'll race you i was really good at sprinting that meant i was really good at kiss chase which was my favorite sport of all even in football i didn't like the dirty tackling but if you put me on the right wing and got the ball to me, I'd run with it. I remember playing rugby, which I didn't really like, but once I got the ball I could run. My motivation was different. It wasn't to score a try, I just didn't want anyone tackling me. I went to one school for a short time called Ward End Hall and they had this really amazing strange sport called basketball which wasn't played much in Britain then and I loved that too. I was really good at it. I didn't just like typical boys sports though. I loved skipping too. I was happy to skip with the girls and I loved the nursery rhymes that went with the skipping probably because I loved poetry so much. When I was a kid I was doing little verses all the time. I loved wordplay, so when girls were skipping and chanting, I thought it was great fun. One day I was sitting in assembly and the teacher said, Boys and girls, I have some good news. We're going to have a cricket team. And we have a captain for our cricket team. Young Benjamin here. You're a born cricketer. And I thought... I'm definitely not. But cricket was a sport I didn't like or understand. I remember the teacher said to me, You're a born cricketer. And I thought, I'm definitely not a born cricketer. I don't think he was. Trouble at home. When I was about nine years old, my mum and dad split up. I went with my mum and my brothers and sisters stayed with dad. We had to move around a lot because dad kept finding us and he could be quite violent. Sometimes we'd find a little bed sit and we'd be there for a week or so and then we'd have to move on because dad found out where we were. Sometimes we'd have to change our names so he couldn't find us. We never slept on the street but we had to knock on doors sometimes and ask to be put up. I was never lonely or sad because I made friends and had a good time wherever I was. I'd go into the street and see if the local kids would play football with me. That's just what you did. As bad as things were, the most important thing for me, for my life, was having fun. So once my mum had told me the rules of the house, I'd go and find some friends to play with and that was it. Every time we moved school, I went to a different school because of the move. Once I was only at the school for a day, it was a boys school and I hated it. But most of the time I'd stay for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Every time mum moved, 
she'd find me a local school. So I've been to a lot of schools in a lot of cities. I got used to moving around and it wasn't too bad because there weren't ever any long goodbyes. I'd come home from school and mum would be packed and we'd just have to go. The only thing is that I don't have many school friends now, probably because of my lifestyle when I was growing up. Nobody from school really remembers me because I was only ever there for a short time. And the next part of the book is visits to Jamaica, which we'll look at another time. I hope you like that reading of Benjamin Zephyriah's My Story. It's very interesting how he needed to move about and how he still wanted to have fun and he could still see the positive things in life. Reading the next part of the story, we'll find out what his visits to Jamaica were like. Bye.